Let's code up an algorithm to take the outer product between two vectors. We'll start with the formal mathematical definition. We say that the outer product of two vectors begins by letting x be an element of r m by 1 and y be an element of r n by 1, both column vectors x has m rows, y has n rows, m and n do not necessarily have to be equal in order to take the outer product operation. We say that the outer product between vector x and vector y is the m by n matrix defined as x times y transpose. In this situation, the vector x is an m by 1, y is an n by 1, which means y transpose is a 1 by n. Notice that the inner dimensions do agree. x is a vector with one column, y is a vector of one row. The inner dimensions quote unquote match and cancel out, and we're left with a matrix that has m rows and n columns. Notice that the way that we form this matrix is to take the first entry of y and then multiply it by the entire vector x, putting that product in the first column of the output. So y1 times x1, y1 times x2, all the way down to y1 times xm. To get the second column, we take the second entry of y and do the same. So here we have the entire vector x multiplied by y2. Then we go all the way down to the last one. Uh, of course, this should read yn, not xn. I think that was a copy and paste error. But the point is that we take yn multiplied by the entire vector x and then put that in the nth column. That's what we call the column version of this. We could also do the row version where we take the first entry of x multiplied by the entire y transpose vector and put that in the first row of the output. The second entry of x multiplied by the y transpose vector and put it in the second row of the output all the way down to the last entry of x multiplied by that y transpose and put it in the last row of our matrix. This is a outer product operation. One thing to notice here is that each column is just a scalar multiple of the previous columns. And the same thing is true, each row is a scalar multiple of the previous rows. And that has to do with the operations that we're using to form this definition. Let's go ahead and create an algorithm that implements this outer product using for loops. Specifically, we'll create a new script file. And then let's go ahead and save this in our BLOSS level two. It's not the library. In this situation, we're actually still in the sandbox since we're still playing here. And we're going to call this outer products via columns. Um, and then, of course, this is sandbox since we're just uh, playing around and we're not actually ready to code this up as part of our formal library. Now that we have our script file saved, let's go ahead and define some dimensions for our test case. In this case, we'll just go ahead and set x to have three rows and we'll say that y the vector y has n rows why don't we say four so this is going to be a three by four output and then what we'll do is we'll define x to be an m by one vector whose entries are random integers between one and ten and then similarly we'll say that y is a n by one vector whose entries are random integers between one and ten remember that matlab's native uh calculations actually allows us to do the outer product operation ourselves. So we could say that this is x times y transpose, and that would be an m by n matrix. If we go ahead and run this, we'll change folders. And then if I look at a mat, notice that uh, we got to be a little careful here. Let's look at x and y. So in order to form the uh, outer product, what we do is we take the first entry of y and multiply by the entire column x and put that in the first column. So 10 times 9 is 90, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 2 is 20. Then we take the second entry of y, multiply by the entire column x and put it in the second entry here, which is exactly what we see. 7 times 9 is 63, 7 times 10 is 70, 7 times 2 is 14, etc., etc., etc. So we now have coded up MATLAB's native versions of this. And what we want to do is create an algorithm for ourselves to generate outer products. Well, in order to do this, we're going to take a few different perspectives. One of them is going to be a column perspective. The other one's going to be a row perspective. And then within those, we're going to go down to entry by entry. Notice that based on our definitions, in order to form the kth column of the output, what we're going to do is take the kth entry of y and multiply by the entire vector x. So specifically, we kind of think, oh, we're doing the same type of operation a set number of times. In this case, it's yn times. So what we're going to do is run through a for loop 
we'll say that the kth entry of our outer product is going to be the kth value of y multiplied by the entire vector x. Let's go ahead and write this up. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set a to be a zero matrix with m rows and n columns. And then we'll run through the individual columns of a. So for k equals one to n, we will say that the kth column of x is going to be the kth entry of y multiplied by the entire vector x. And this is going to be a column version because we're literally running through the columns where each column is given by a scalar vector multiplication. Let's go ahead and run this. So we'll run again. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. And then we'll look at A. Uh, and then right next to A, let's look at A mat. And we can compare those. Notice that this is going to be a three by four and the uh, actual columns are identical. It's kind of hard to see in that version. And this is where we would want to use what we call an error function. So if we look at the difference between our calculated output and the output that MATLAB calculates, this would give us uh, the differences between the two. And if the algorithm produces the same as MATLAB, we expect that difference to be zero. Let's go ahead and run it. Check that out. We actually get all zeros, which means this algorithm produces the exact same thing as MATLAB. Let's go ahead and visualize what's happening in this algorithm. Over here, we have our mathematical operation, which is going to be an outer product between two vectors. So we say that A is equal to X times Y transpose. We've written that as pseudocode as the kth column of A gets the kth entry of Y multiplied by the entire column vector X. In the process of defining this algorithm, we initialize all data. So we set A to be the zero matrix with three rows and four columns. And then we have two vectors, X and Y. Both are stored as column vectors. We're going to visualize Y as a row vector since we're thinking about the transpose. However, in memory, Y is stored as a contiguous set of data. We can think about that as a column vector. So once we've initialized, then we go into our loop and we set K equal to one. So loop iteration K equal to one. We take the first entry of Y, multiply by the entire column vector x and overwrite that first column of our matrix A. Then we go down to the next iteration. We take the second entry of y, multiply by the entire column vector x, overwrite that in the second column of our output. We go to the third iteration, same idea. Fourth iteration, last entry of y, multiply by the entire column x, stored in the fourth column of the output. Then we exit our loop. And we notice that the uh, matrix that we have calculated stores the exact outer product operation that we desire. Some of you astute viewers might recognize that this is a level two operation since we're suppressing data at the level one. So specifically, each iteration of our for loop is a scalar vector multiplication, but that actually happens between the individual scalar and each entry of our vector, which means if we were so desired, we could replace the body of our loop with another for loop. In other words, we could have a doubly nested for loop. And specifically, what we could do is actually run through each calculation that goes into the scalar vector multiplication. Well, scalar vector multiplication is literally just take the scalar and multiply by each entry of the vector. Here, this is a column vector, so we'll run through rows. What that means is, let's go for i goes from 1 to m, in other words, the first row all the way down to the nth row, and then we'll multiply each individual entry of x by the kth scalar in y. Let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm going to replace this with for i goes from 1 to m, and then we'll end it. And then let's think about this the i kth entry of the outer product that we desire is going to be the uh, kth entry of y multiplied by the ith entry of x. And that's exactly what we see. This processes the output by column. So we're running down the columns. Let's go ahead and uh, suppress the output and we'll run it. We'll take a look at the error. That error is zero if and only if the algorithm we've implemented not matches MATLAB's native functionality. And that's exactly what we see here. Let's return to our visual representation of these ideas. Once again, we're doing our mathematical operation known as an outer product. Here we have a doubly nested for loop that first runs through the columns. So we're going to form our output by columns. And then within each column, we move down individual rows where the i kth entry of our outer product is the kth entry of y multiplied by the ith entry of x. Once again, in our algorithm, we initialize our variables. So we create a template A, which is all zero entries. 
and then we have a vector x and a vector y in memory. We begin by progressing through the outer and inner loops. The outer loop we set equal to k equals one, the inner loop we start at k equals one, and then literally we multiply the first entry of a y by the first entry of x, store that in entry one one. We go down to the next entry of x, multiply by the first entry of y, store that in entry two one, then we go down to the last entry, which means that in the third iteration of my inner loop, I have taken care of the entire first column that I desire, so y1 times x3. When we continue, we go out and increment our outer loop counter and then restart our inner loop. So we go over to the second entry of y, we hit it with the first entry of x, we store that in entry 1, 2. We go down to the next one, y2 times x2, y2 times x3, and again, we've now taken care of the second column. And then we just continue down, move down to the next entry of y, multiply by the first, second, and third entry of x, stored in the third column, move to the last entry of y, multiply by the first, second, and third entry of x, and now we formed our outer product, we exit our loops, and a now stores the exact outer product that we wanted to calculate. One quick comment, I actually deleted my BLOSS level two version of this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reintroduce that. Uh, sometimes when you're exploring algorithms, it's useful to be able to keep code just so you know that it works as intended. So what we said was that the kth column was gonna be equal to the kth entry of y multiplied by the entire vector x, and I'm just gonna store that for later purpose, um, and I'll comment it out just in case I wanna come back to that. It's kind of a useful habit to keep all versions of the code in the original sandbox file in case I wanna refer back to the work that I've already done. This initial implementation was based on a column partition version of our outer product. There's no reason why we need to form the outer product by columns. We could equally form it by rows. Let's explore that version by actually starting a new script file. And in this case, we'll save it, so save as. And we're gonna call this the outer product via rows algorithm. And this is a sandbox file since all I'm doing is kind of playing around with the algorithm itself, not worried about sharing this with other folks. Once again, we can reuse code that we've done already. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that first version. But now the goal is we wanna form the outer product by taking scalar multiples of the rows. Remember what we said though, that to get the ith row of the outer product, we multiply the ith entry of x by the entire vector y. We do that a fixed number of times, specifically we do that m times, which is a for loop, right? If we do the same operation a fixed number of times, we call that a for loop. So our for loop is gonna go from i goes from one to m, i being the number of rows, and then we're gonna say that the ith row of the outer product is gonna be the ith entry of x multiplied by the entire vector y. Now, of course, in this particular visualization, y should be a row vector. If y is a column vector, then we actually need to do a transpose there. The point is we've got to analyze our actual dimensions. Let's go back over here and we'll actually implement this. So for i goes from one to m, and we'll go ahead and end this. And then we say that the ith row of the outer product is gonna be the ith entry of x, so x i comma one, multiplied by the entire vector y. However, in this situation, we're storing y as a column vector, which means that we actually have to put a transpose on it. So here we're gonna put y transpose. And then of course we could test our work by taking the air between the two of them. Remember, we've already kind of established that MATLAB's native version of the outer product is given by the time symbol. So we're gonna compare the outer product that we achieve with MATLAB's native version, and then the air between the two is gonna tell us whether or not we achieve the same values. Let's go ahead and run it, and then we'll look at the air. Notice that this algorithm actually does produce what we expect it to. Let's visualize what's happening here. Our math operation is gonna be our outer product. We're gonna form this by rows this time rather than by columns. So we run through the rows of the outer product, and we say that the ith row of our desired matrix is gonna be the ith entry of x, multiplied by y transpose. When we set up this algorithm, we initialize a matrix A to be all zeros. We have a vector x and a vector y in memory. And then we progress through the values of our loop index. In this case, we take the first entry of x, x sub one, multiply by the entire vector y and store that product in the first row of our outer product. Then we move down to the second entry of x, multiply by the entire 
vector y transpose stored in the second column of the outer product go down to the last column so we go all the way to the last entry here x sub 3 multiplied by y transpose stored in the third entry of our outer product we exit the loop and our matrix a now stores the exact outer product operation that we want for you astute viewers you might recognize that this is a BLOS level 2 operation in other words this is at the vector levels we're thinking about forming each row individually by doing a scalar vector multiplication the output of which is a vector of course we could replace that with a scalar operation so specifically go down into BLOS level one let's go ahead and comment that other version and then we, we will replace the body of this loop with another for loop in this case we're going to move across the columns of y transpose so for k goes from one to n uh, we're going to say that the i kth value is going to be the i -th value of x multiplied by the kth value of y basically the same as we did before except in the opposite order we'll go ahead and suppress this and then if we run it the error is going to be the difference between our version and the MATLAB's native version notice that error is zero in other words we're producing the same output that MATLAB does as is my style, I'd like to encourage you to visualize what's happening here. The math operation that we're doing is an outer product. Here we've got a doubly nested for loop, first running through the rows, then running through the columns. In other words, this is a row partition version that goes down to BLOS level one. Here, the i kth entry is gonna be the ith entry of x multiplied by the kth entry of y. When we initialize, we set our matrix A, the desired output, to be all zeros. Then we have a vector X and a vector Y in memory. Here I'm visualizing Y as a row vector, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, the way that we stored this, this was a column vector. The point is to track dimensions appropriately. Let's go ahead and go into the first iterations of our outer and inner loop. So the outer loop gets set to I equals one. The inner loop gets set to K equals one. So I multiply X one by Y one. I store that in entry one one. Then I move across the vector y transpose, which is equivalent to moving down the vector y. So x1 times y2, store that in entry 1, 2. Go down to the next one, x1 times y3, all the way down to the last entry of that first row, which is x1 times y4. Once I do that, I've hit the last column of a vector y transpose, or the last row of y. So we increment our outer loop index. We go up from 1 to 2, which means I'm going down to the second row. Then I do the same thing again. I multiply x2 by each individual entry. So I go first entry of y, second entry, third entry, fourth entry, overwriting each one. This means I get to the last entry of Y transpose. So now I increment, the next step is gonna to be to increment the outer loop index. And then I'm gonna do the same thing once again. I'm gonna multiply the last entry of X by each individual entry of Y, the first entry, the second entry, the third entry, the fourth entry. This now has exhausted both the outer and inner for loop. So we exit our loop and the matrix A now stores the exact outer product that we desire. This leads me to a community challenge for this video. In this case, we've stored both the vectors X and Y as column vectors. Here's my challenge to you. How would these algorithms change if we stored those as row vectors instead? Yet a second challenge of this would be to develop an algorithm that works every time, independent of whether or not the vectors X and Y are stored as column vectors or row vectors or some combination in between. Thank you so much for your attention, y'all. In the next video, we're gonna look at an algorithm to do matrix matrix addition. I'll see you there.